Welcome Necro Posters and crew, I'm the Body Counter. Today I'd like to share my thoughts, ideas and predictions for the Dead Space remake with you all. As most Dead Space fans know by now, Motive Studios dropped a stream not too long ago showing off some very early footage of the remake. And boy was that a fun voice chat with the Necro Posting server. What the f fuck? <laughs> I just got reminded of that like boomer meme of the the lady opening up a flip phone near a 5G tower and the half the kid's face is like melting off. <laughs> <laughs> to start with, I'll list the things worth mentioning that were shown off during the stream. The frostbite engine at work with environmental lighting and details, improved dismemberment and gore, Dead Space 2 zero gravity movement replacing the original, the ability to open doors in zero gravity without having to be standing on a surface, new rooms and area layouts to explore, no microtransactions, more lore inclusion from other Dead Space games and media, important story improvements such as more attempts to actively search for Nicole, and the moment that had me fangirling, Gunner Wright returning to voice Isaac Clarke. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm hyped as hell, and the game is nowhere near done, and we're nowhere near a confirmed release date. On the plus side to this, we have plenty of time to discuss the remake and what we can hope to see, which is why I'm making this video. So without further ado, let's start swinging. I've noticed a lot of people like to shit on the Frostbite engine, but they can't argue with the fact that the engine looks gorgeous. In Battlefield 1, the player's weapon and uniform would gradually get dirtier when they crawled along the ground. This was so detailed in Battlefield 1 that the dirt and mud would disappear when you were submerged in water or it rained. A brilliant detail to include in the remake would be for Isaac's suit and weapons to slowly become more bloody, scratched and dented as the game progresses and after facing intense battles. It would make sense for Isaac to start his journey in a glossy, well-maintained engineering suit, but to have the equipment he uses gradually lose their shine and show signs of damage. A small but neat addition on the graphical side of the game. Not to mention, they can make the decontamination rooms in the game clean the blood and the grime off the suits and weapons of the player, giving you a temporary shine until the next time you have a slasher's blades wrapped around you. A similar detail was featured in Dead Space 3 with Isaac and Carver's suits attracting small amounts of snow on top of them when outside. One of the iconic features of the Dead Space games is Isaac wielding the legendary Plasma Cutter. The majority of weapons you can find and buy in Dead Space are engineering and mining tools acting as improvised weapons, each with their own stats, purposes and character. What brings me to this topic is how the Dead Space remake will bring back the iconic tools of dismemberment. We can most likely expect to see the return of all of the original Dead Space's weapons for sure, but my thoughts are on the what if. Such as, what if the remake were to bring us new weapons from other Dead Space media set around the same time of the first game? The Divot from Downfall and Extraction, Arc Welder from Extraction, and the Rivet Gun, no, no not the Dead, not the Dead Space 2 one, the Extraction one, could be worthy additions to the remake to add some more spice to the weapon selection, while keeping them balanced and creating some new strategies to use against the Necro Hordes. And now for the crazier idea, melee weapons. If the remake were to add such a thing, I'd take a guess and say they have two options for melee weapons. The Plasma Saw from Dead Space Downfall, or the Rock Saw from both Downfall and Extraction. While the idea is radical for a remake of the original game, the concept of melee weapons isn't unknown to the Dead Space series. With the Rock Saw being a usable weapon in Dead Space Extraction, the Plasma Saw in Dead Space Mobile, and the Hydraulic Engines in Dead Space 3 acting as plasma knives, chainsaws and hammers. It's a lot to ask for such a gameplay change from the original, which is why it's probably best to only have one of these used in the game instead of all of them. The Plasma Saw could use the same ammo as the Plasma Cutter and have a very slow swing, so timing would be everything in order to take a Necro's limb off. While the Rock Saw could have unlimited ammo and a faster swing, but having a cooldown after a set number of swings so it isn't too abusive to use. Now this next idea would be a very interesting implementation to improve upon the shooter mechanics while not dipping too far into Dead Space 3's level of OP weapon crafting. In Dead Space 2, a few weapons had the option for a special upgrade at a bench, or spec for short. These upgrades provided a small but beneficial change to your weapon, giving it a further buff. The Plasma Cutter's shots would gain an incendiary effect, the Javelin Gun would detonate its javelins after using the electric alt fire, the Contact Beam would gain a stasis coating on its alt fire, and the Detonator would have an increased blast radius. My idea would be to bring the spec upgrades to the remake and apply them to the bench upgrade node trees of every weapon, 
and a further development of the idea would be for certain weapons to have two spec upgrades that are mutually exclusive, meaning you can only get one or the other. A few of my ideas for spec upgrades include the line gun being able to prematurely detonate its mine with a second click of the alt fire button, and the ripper spec involving its blade guard cover retracting when doing a melee swing, giving you a melee damage boost when trying to conserve ammo up close. Aside from listing all of my ideas, another potential feature would be for some weapons to have two mutually exclusive specs, each altering its alt fire. For example, the Pulse Rifle by default could have the 360 degree alt fire we see in the original Dead Space, and the two specs are the Dead Space 2 Grenade Launcher alt fire and the Dead Space Extraction Flechette Shotgun alt fire, allowing the player to decide what alt fire they'd like to run with. As mentioned in the early build stream, the team at Motive are looking for ways to enrich the lore of the remake while retaining the main premise of the story and goals of Isaac and his team. Ways of enrichment the team are looking to pursue would be featuring lore from the wider Dead Space universe, such as the books, games, and movies. Such inclusions to other Dead Space media are said to vary between subtle audio text log messages, What kind of fucking McDonald's has a message? and more obvious methods to build upon the Dead Space universe. Ideas to help build upon the depth of the remake's universe would be small references to the protagonists of Dead Space Extraction, such as clues of their journey on the colony and the Ishimura. References to the movie Dead Space Downfall could also be done. You have Uno, you fucking dick! Whether that be showing the original shuttle that brought the infestation from the colony to the ship, collectible audio logs of Alyssa Vincent and her team, or even bringing the Grave Robber, a cut downfall necromorph, to life in the remake as a boss fight, seeing as it never got the scene it deserved in the movie. Extra lore and story improvements and implementations for the remake could include expanding on EarthGov lore and their goals, giving the player hints to the first Aegis 7 incident prior to Dead Space 1, more unitology and CEC coverage, and perhaps more lore building on what the state of Earth is at this point in humanity's struggle for resources. On top of adding references to other Dead Space media, something the remake has to do is rectify some plot holes or differing scenes from multiple sources. Examples of such ideas that might be better off revised could be Matthias's death, whether he was killed intentionally by Dr. Kine in the game portrayal, or unintentionally slash self-defense as shown in Downfall. Another would be finally setting in stone if Isaac knew or didn't know that Nicole was dead all along, a question that still leaves people theorizing to this day. While the original Dead Space was good for its time, many things still stick out like a sore thumb in relation to mechanics and small little nitpicks here and there. One major thing the remake needs is an option to disable hint pop-ups. For the first few chapters of the game, you're bombarded with hints that irritate the returning player on their new game plus. Use run to move quickly. Another would be allowing the flamethrower to be fired in a vacuum and wheeze a poisoned air, something I covered as an oversight in my Dead Space Facts and Tips video, since the flamethrower's fuel is quite capable of being fired in a vacuum. Isaac's arm melee when used against a wall causes Isaac to teleport a meter backwards and can be a bit bothersome for the eyes, and I have no doubt they're already doing a great job with enhancing the aiming and movement of Isaac since the PC port of the original had many issues with mouse and keyboard gameplay, unless you were to turn V-Sync off. You know how much I sacrificed? One minor thing as well would be perfecting the sound volume settings, music, sound effects, and voice. In the original game, some music tracks were tied to the sound effects volume, and some voices were tied to the sound effects volume, and the other way around. Fixing this small volume setting would be a big help to those wanting an ideal experience for their ears. It's a no-brainer that we'll see the return of all the necromorphs from the original Dead Space, but this also begs the question on potentially new necromorphs seeing their place in the game. Cut necromorphs such as the Commander and Swinger from the first game concept art, or even the Flytrap from Dead Space 2 could see an introduction to the remake to spice the gameplay up and encounters. Another potential idea worth mentioning is bringing Dead Space 2 and or Dead Space Extraction necromorphs into the remake, such as the Puker, Grabber, Flyer, Cyst, Stalkers, etc. The Extraction necromorphs were seen just prior to the events of Isaac's arrival to the Ishimura, so it wouldn't be too far-fetched of an idea to bring the grabber and the flyer from the on-rail shooter dead space into the standard third-person free movement dead space, 
with their own introductions, behaviour, and death animations. Most Dead Space games had extra replayability in them after players completed the game. This replayability came in the form of New Game Plus, new difficulties, weapons, suits, and more. With the remake in development and the team wanting to keep most of the game akin to the original with some extra additions, it's almost certain a New Game Plus feature will return for the remake, allowing players to carry on from their last playthrough with all of their gear, credits, and power nodes still on hand. As for new ideas for unlockables and extra replayability, the remake could introduce unlockable suit variants or new suits entirely depending on what difficulty you complete the game on. Beating the game on easy, normal, hard, and impossible could give the players a new suit per difficulty completed, maybe even including a unique skinned weapon variant to go alongside the suit, such as the suit and weapon variants of Dead Space 2. Except in the remake's case, they wouldn't be DLCs since Motive had already stated that there will be no microtransactions in the remake. On top of the new suits and weapons for completing the game, the reintroduction of Hardcore Mode into the remake could be well worth the time to add in. Not that it would be hard to add in anyways. Hardcore was added to Dead Space 2 and limited the player to saving only three times during the entire game, and dying resulted in going back to their last save. Hardcore returned in Dead Space 3, but dying meant you restarted the entire game, as there were no save stations in Dead Space 3. The original Dead Space had no Hardcore mode, so this iconic mode for veteran players would be a brilliant feature to add from the sequels to the remake. On top of the Hardcore mode, rewards for completing the game on said difficulty could also be a possibility, like Dead Space 2's Hardcore rewards being the Hand Cannon and the Soldier Suit. Okay. Okay. This next idea is less likely to be a thing, but could aid the remake in adding some more replayability to the experience. One thing that all Dead Space games suffer from is identical enemy spawns, players memorizing where necros will emerge from the vents, or what to expect when entering a room. My idea would be for each difficulty to slowly scale up both the number of necromorphs and what necromorphs spawn. For example, playing on easy in the USM Valor Mess Hall, the player could fight several Twitchers, Lurkers, Leapers, and Exploders. But on normal, the Exploders could be exchanged for Armored Slashers and Lurkers for Enhanced Lurkers. Then on impossible difficulty, the player could fight Enhanced Slashers, leapers, some twitches, and a few dividers, or something along those lines. Randomizing the experience and subverting the player's expectations of what was encountered in the original can both scare the new players and happily surprise the veterans of the original. One of my only negatives when it comes to the Dead Space games as a whole is their boss fights. Sure they look cool and the bosses are introduced in a thrilling way, with a few having a lot of build up towards them, but gameplay wise, they're too easy, in my opinion. Bosses be like, avoid big appendage, shoot big yellow sack, repeat until dead. WHAT THE FUCK?! COPE! If Motive Studios are having to remake the entire game from the ground up, I'd love to see some sort of improvement to the way we fight the bosses of Dead Space. The Leviathan boss fight could have support necros helping it attack Isaac, such as Lurkers or Leapers, during one phase of the fight, and maybe the second phase could have the Leviathan spew up a drag tentacle to attempt to pull Isaac into its mouth. Possibly with Lurkers trying to shoot Isaac while he's being dragged, so you'd have to prioritize Lurkers before shooting the drag tentacle itself. The slug fight is just a turret section, nothing too spectacular, unless the first phase of the slug fight was in the comms array. Perhaps Isaac would have to fix the array while also fighting the belly of the slug by dodging its tentacles, spike quills, and shooting its weak spot. Then once you arrive to the ADS cannon, the second phase of the boss fight begins. As for the hive mind, that would be harder to fix. You have less room to move than the Leviathan fight, but your kit and suit is stronger than when you fought the Leviathan six chapters ago. Having a wider area to move would be a first. Secondly, the hive mind would be more of a challenge if it had varying tentacle swings, making the boss have multiple animations or movements of its tentacles coming down for a swing at Isaac would make the sequence more unpredictable for the player. Besides tentacles, I think a neat feature the hive mind could have would be a scream attack that actually disorientates Isaac if he's unable to damage or destroy a weak spot fast enough. The scream could put Isaac into an animation trying to cover his ears, only he can't because he can't cover it with the helmet on his head. Super the show. And the scream attack could apply a mild sway to Isaac's aiming until the effect wears off. If you took too long to attack the hive mind's chest sacs, it would either shoot two pregnants from its mouth to try and attack Isaac, or it would do what the Leviathan did and shoot explosive pustules at the player. This could return for the remake, but having the hive mind do this not just if you're too slow to destroy a weak spot would be cool and spice up the combat besides being swung at by its tentacles. These boss fight revisions wouldn't be making them Dark Souls bosses or anything, but more of a challenge than what they are normally. Peng. 
That is all. The remake needs Peng. If there's no Peng, we converge. These are some of my ideas and predictions I hope make it in some way into the remake. I left out a few others to spare some time, but I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comments below on what you'd hope to see in the remake. To show your love for this kind of content, please feel free to drop a like to show your support. And if you're a Dead Space fan and enjoy shitposting, join the Dead Space Necroposting Facebook group and Discord linked in the description below. Subscribe to join the Horde today, and as always, make us whole again.